Welcome to the Having It All podcast, the show about what it takes to live an abundant, loving life. My name is Matthew Bivens, and each week I'm helping you get out of your head so that you can truly have it all. Let's do it. Hello, hello. Matthew Bivens here, and I am so grateful that you're here hanging out with me on the Having It All podcast. This is the show where we talk about experiencing, creating, and living an abundant, loving life. I love talking about this stuff. I really do. It just, it gets me, it gets me pumped up. I just, I can, I don't think I can get enough of these types of conversations. A big part of it is because I'm watching you all put this stuff into action. I'm watching you when you when you reach out to me and you share with me your stories and when we work together or when I see you on the Balance Chart app. And so all of that is super inspiring because I know that you're not just here to listen to me, you're here to take this stuff and apply it and experience some breakthrough or maybe some healing or simply some growth in your life. And I love that. So if this is your first time here, Welcome. I'm happy that you're hanging out. If it is not your first time here, welcome back. Let's do this thing. Today's topic is so fantastic. We're talking about sex, and we're talking about the goal that you might have for sex and how the goals that you have for sex are heavily impacting your experience of sex, but also how you experience yourself, how you experience your partner, how you experience love, maybe how you view love, all of those things um, are, are wrapped up in the goals that you have for sex. So I'm going to be sharing a few things, unpacking a few things, and oh, it's going to be dope. It's going to be dope. But first, I got some magic to share. Always got to kick things off by expressing magic. You know, and magic, magical moments are when we've influenced ourselves, others, and life in an empowering way. And there's so much magic happening. And I have two examples, one of them small, one of them is big. Um, I just wanted to to show you that magic looks different. Magic comes in all shapes and sizes. So the small magic I had is uh, this morning I was on my way to hang out with a friend of mine. And before I was heading to, to her place, I stopped by the grocery store and picked up a couple of pieces of food. I wanted some fruit. And when I was checking out, the woman said, hey, go and grab a free bouquet of flowers. We've got some flowers over here, and and, um, you can have one if you like. So I thought that was so cool, you know? I walk in the grocery store, get my thing, and I get to leave with a free bouquet of flowers. So I took a couple of those flowers and gave them to my friend, whose house I was heading over to. And then later on in the day, I had the rest of the bouquet of flowers to give to Sarah. So that's total magic. You know, that's the universe just dropping abundance in my lap. And what I love about it is that I was able to take that and then share it with others. And that's really what abundance is, right? You want to you wanna be able to receive it and then also know that there's plenty for everyone else. So that's, my, that's one piece of magic. You can call that small magic, I guess. My big magic has to do with me becoming more and more aware of when I push the mute button in my life. So that's when I'm, I'm operating out of consideration rather than courage. So pressing the mute button means and looks like when I have some sort of thought going through my head um, that you know, could result in me being bold, me taking some sort of bold action, whether it's uh, saying something bold to somebody, um, speaking my mind, whatever it is. And I have, I, I'm, I'm becoming aware of when I'm hitting that mute button and not acting um, out of courage, not being bold. So recently, I've just been intentionally speaking my truth more and more often. And I had a chance last night to speak my truth to Sarah. And it was just, it was magical influencing myself to do that because I was recognizing, ah, this is a moment when you normally press the mute button. So I, I, you know, found that place inside me where that boldness lives. And I spoke my truth and shared, and, you know, Sarah received it, received it powerfully. And, you know, 
it was scary. And, and speaking my truth and being bold and, and acting out of courage can be scary. But you know what? It's, it's very much in alignment with who I want to be. It's actually in my mission statement. There's a portion of my mission statement that says, being authentic with my voice and choice. So that's being authentic with my words and my deeds. So big piece of magic was me um, influencing myself to do that yesterday. So reflect on your magic. What magical moments have you been creating in your life? Because they're happening all the time and they are so worth acknowledging and celebrating. So I encourage you to do that. I encourage you to do that. I've got some listener love. I got some listener love. And today's listener love is different because normally I'm reading um, an email that you've sent me with some awesome feedback or an Instagram message, you know, a DM or something like that. But today, you know what? I felt like I want to sp- share some love with people who may not necessarily have, uh, have been giving me love uh, back. And what I mean by that is I have a couple of one-star iTunes reviews, and I want to read them. And I want to, you know, I want to use this space of listener love to show gratitude for these two individuals for taking out time to actually go on iTunes and leave a review, even if it's one star. So uh, I have two here. They're actually from back in May. I guess I put out an episode in May that um, a couple folks didn't didn't quite enjoy because this these 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 reviews came in on May seventh and May eighth. Um, both of them are one star. And the first one is from actually the name of this one is kind of funny. Uh, their iTunes name is Having It All My Ass. <laughs> so they um, they wanted to express their feedback, so they created a whole new iTunes account because I doubt that was their name before listening to this podcast. Uh, so they created the iTunes account, having it all my ass, and they just you know they shared that they felt the show was a downright time waster, uh, one of the worst podcasts that they wasted ten minutes of their life listening to it. And you know what? I absolutely have gratitude for you. Uh, for giving the ch- the show a chance. I mean, you gave it 10 minutes. That's awesome. That's 10 minutes that you could apply to so many other things. So you gave it 10 minutes. It wasn't for you. And you actually went back and created this account and went on iTunes and left the review. So you gave it even more than 10 minutes. And for that, I am grateful. I am. And the other one-star review comes from KDB Cool. And uh, it talks about unfulfilled relationships and careers and says... Um, All this states is that if you don't find what you need, leave. Such a bad moral standard. A big problem with today's society is exactly this, sad and selfish. So I don't know exactly what Katie be cool, what you're referring to, but um, I get it that it didn't connect with you. And hey, I'm I'm still grateful that you gave the show a shot. I don't know if you listened to the whole thing or just a a portion of the episode, um, but you still gave it a listen. And that's amazing because there's so many other options out there, so many other things you could have been doing, um, but you decided to give the show a listen. So I do appreciate that, and I appreciate you jumping on iTunes. So, you know, listener love doesn't always look like this, and love doesn't always look like this in general, but I definitely still have gratitude for folks, even when they don't agree with me, even when they don't like what I'm saying, even when I don't like what they're saying, um, there's still gratitude and appreciation and so, you know, I wanted to I wanted to show that today. So, if you want to leave a review, whether it's one star or five stars, uh, you can do so over at iTunes, um, also known as Apple Podcasts. And if you want to to you know engage in that way, I I recommend subscribing to the show first, then leave a rating. That's where you kind of rate it the stars, one to five stars, and then leave a review. Tell me what you think. And, um, you know, I'll read them on the show. I'll read all of them, whether they're five stars or one stars. It's all, it's all beautiful. So uh, before we jump into the episode, quick announcement that the Trust Challenge is going to be returning on October 1st. Yes. So a lot of you participated in the Trust Challenge back in August, where the entire month of August, we were repping building trust within ourselves. And we were, we were working on building that greater sense of assurance that we can count on ourselves. And we were doing that by making one deposit into our personal trust account. 
every single day. The deposit could be something like starting your day with 25 push-ups or doing 10 minutes of mindfulness or drinking water first thing in the morning or whatever it was. It was some sort of healthy habit. And a bunch of you did it in August. And so uh, the experience was so fantastic. I got such amazing feedback that I am going to be uh, rolling it out again in October. And I have a few updates. I'm going to be doing weekly themes. So week one, we're going to focus on something like uh, making physical deposits. Week two, we'll focus on, uh, let's say, making mental deposits or emotional deposits. So we're going we're gonna to vary it up a little bit, but we're still going to be making these, <clears throat> these deposits. Just want to make sure that they happen over the course of, the, of the, that month um, and touch all these important areas. So that's one of the things we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to have more touch points with you all and more tips coming your way. Um, but I do want to know your feedback. I've heard from several of you already. I've heard from you. So if you participated in August and you have an opinion, which I know you do, share your feedback with me because I'm going to be re-rolling it out on October 1st. I want it to be something that truly empowers you, inspires you, motivates you, gets you building that trust within yourself. So tell me what you would like to see. Specifically, I want to know one thing you liked. I want to know one thing that did not work for you. And I want to know something that you would change or add. So you can email that feedback to mattcbivens at gmail.com or you can go on my website, matthewbivens.com and just drop a note in the comment or the, uh, the contact form. But share your feedback and, you know, we're going to have, uh, I'm not sure when this is going to go out. So you probably, it's the 20th when I'm recording it. So you might have a week or so to give me the feedback and I can incorporate it. But I will be incorporating your feedback. I already have. So trust challenge coming back October 1. Give me your feedback, and we're going to freaking blast ourselves into this final quarter of the year with a greater sense of trust. Yes. All right. Enough stuff. Let's get into the stuff. Let's talk about sex. Boy, uh, I've been wanting to do a sex topic for a while. Um, I had done some a few months ago, but it was like, it's time to talk about sex. So I really thought about, boy, what, what do I want to get into? There's so many different avenues to go down. And yesterday I was in a conversation with a friend of mine and it's really fascinating. You know, we, we met for two hours and we were doing some work and and having conversations. And then on the way to the car, as we were walking back to our cars, we started talking about sex because I told him I want to do a sex episode for the podcast. So we just started talking about sex and we started talking about um, our paradigms around sex and uh, some of our history around sex and some of the elements of our current sex lives with our partners. And one of the things that kind of came out of that conversation were us talking about our goals for sex. Like what, it, what is the intention that we hold for, for sex, for lovemaking? And that, you know, that conversation was fascinating to me because, you know, well, f- for the for first part, Neither of us were really thinking we were going to get into that topic, but once we did, we had so much to say. We had so much to share. So that tells me that this stuff is on our mind, it's on my mind, which means I know it's on your mind. And we had different goals. We had different objectives uh, for sex. And you know, we kind of looked at the objectives of sex through different lenses. So over the years, my my objectives for sex, the goals that I had, what I wanted to get out of sex um, has evolved. Uh, For many, many, many years, it was one thing. And uh, more recently, it's kind of evolved into something else. But so that's where that's where the that's where this topic comes from. And when I think back to my earliest sexual encounters, I lost my virginity when I was 17. When I think back to then, all the way through my 20s, you know, approaching my 30s, the goal of sex was orgasm. That was always the objective. That was always what was on top of my mind was orgasm. And for me, that evolved. It was really interesting. It started out as me being highly, highly focused on my orgasm in the sense that I wanted to experience an orgasm. When I was 17, I'm like, oh my goodness, this feels great. Okay, um, I want more of this. So let me, let me experience more orgasms. 
And that's what was on my mind. And that probably persisted for the next couple of years. And then it slowly sort of evolved to, okay, let me delay my orgasm long enough so that she can enjoy herself. I didn't I didn't have a goal of her having an orgasm. I just wanted her to have some sort of an enjoyable experience. So let me delay. Let me hold off. Let me do all, whatever I need to do. Let me, let me learn some tricks. Let me like pinch off the or Let me like literally go down and just squeeze myself so that the orgasm stops. Let me pull out and breathe and bite my tongue. Let me do all of these different things so that I can delay my orgasm so that she can have some sort of pleasure. From there, it, it morphed into, let me be really focused on her orgasm and let me take responsibility for her orgasm. So then my mind was all about, it still had the delay factor in there, but it was, let me delay long enough for her to get off, for her to come. And if I didn't, holy shit, the, the amount of shame and the amount of, of, of judgment that flooded into my mind the instant that the orgasm happened. And that sort of paradigm, the one that I just stated, me me wanting her to have an orgasm, at least one, like let, let just let her have one orgasm. As soon as she's coming, it's okay for me to come. Like that paradigm for me persisted for a long ass time. Maybe almost 10 years after my very first sexual experience. And so I think that's a common goal for men. I totally do. I think a lot of men have this goal in mind of orgasm. And it can start out being a self-centered goal. It can start out being, you know, sex. The purpose of sex is my orgasm. It's for pleasure. It's for, it's, you know, it's for, for me to feel good. It's for my pleasure. And it might evolve along the same path that evolved for me. And then in having conversations with women and in, you know, really opening up to Sarah and, and other partners that I have, like I really started to learn that um, a lot of women have a different goal for sex. Sex a lot of times has to do with duty. Sex is more obligation. It's part of the deal. It's part of what happens when you're in a relationship. It's part of making your husband happy. It's part of making your boyfriend happy. Sex can be how you show love. And I think that's, that might be a common one for both men and women. Sex is how you show love. Okay, I love you, and I know that because we're having sex. And, you know, I think for both parties, the goal for sex can be, well, the motivation for sex can be rooted in fear. I'm afraid that if I don't deliver in some sort of way, if I don't have the right type of sex drive, my partner is going to leave me for somebody else who can deliver and who does have a higher sex drive. So our goals for sex, you know, when you really dig into them, they're fascinating. So interesting to, to see where those ideas and those beliefs come from. You know, a lot of mine were rooted in fear. A lot of mine were rooted in inadequacy. A lot of mine were rooted in, in you know, judgment. And so orgasm was was the pinnacle. Orgasm, for me, for years, has been the barometer of sex. Was sex good? Well, did you have an orgasm? Yes. Did she have an orgasm? No. Okay, well, then the sex wasn't good. Was sex good? Well, did you have an orgasm? No. Did she have an orgasm? Yes. Okay, cool. Like, I can live with that. Was sex good? Well, did I have an orgasm? Yes. Did she have an orgasm? Yes. Whoa, there you go. Now we're having amazing sex because orgasm was the barometer. So... Those are some, those are just two paradigms. Those are just two ways to view the goals of sex. I'm not saying one is right or wrong. I'm not saying that anything is mature or immature. Those are just two paradigms. There are others. There are absolutely other perspectives you can have on what the goal or the intention for sex is. And for me, moving from a place of being focused on orgasm to moving to what for me has been this next phase has has been a huge shift in sex, in intimacy, in how I view myself and my role and my power. 
And that has been moving to a place of, of the goal is more of, around connectedness. The goal is more around connection. Connecting with myself and connecting with the other person. From that connection creates intimacy. So that is where my mind is at today. I'm playing for connection. I'm playing for intimacy in the vast majority of my sexual experiences, my, sec- my sexual encounters. And with the connection piece, you know, I am, I'm really about connecting with myself. And what does that mean? Because that's an interesting thing. Why would you try to connect with yourself when you're having sex with another person? Well, as I become more aware of my thoughts and the beliefs and the scripts that run in my mind on autopilot, I become aware that in sex, for me, when I'm in that incredibly uh, physically vulnerable state, emotionally vulnerable state, when I'm with another person, when I'm making love, when I'm connected in that way, a lot of shit comes up for me. A lot of stuff has come up and still does come up. These feelings about my self-worth, these feelings uh, connected to confidence, inadequacy, all sorts of really fascinating things come up. And so for me, when I'm connecting to myself, when I'm connecting with my heart, those things either don't come up or when they do come up, because I'm connected, they don't linger. Because in the past, those things would come up and they would stay there. They would get into my mind. I would move from from acting from my heart and I would move up into my head and I would be so caught up in my head about don't come, don't come, don't come. What does my body look like? What do my moans look like? Oh my gosh, I sound ridiculous. Is she even enjoying this? You know what? I'm looking at her face. I don't really see a response right now. She must not be enjoying this. This is because X, Y, Z reason. Holy shit. Why is she even with me? All of that stuff, it snowballs. That's what I used to do because when I was not connected, those thoughts and feelings would run rampant. So now when I'm stepping into the bedroom, when I'm looking to, to you know, be, be physically intimate, I'm also looking for that emotional intimacy with myself. I'm looking to get connected to that part of me that is that powerful part of me. I have a word for it. I call it beast mode. When I'm connected, when I'm really like that connection is there, like plugging that USB into the back of your computer, or like in that movie Avatar when their ponytails like connect with with uh, whatever other being, like that type of connection for me that that activates beast mode within me. You know, it brings that out. I know what that connection feels like. It's a beautiful thing. It's a powerful thing. And that's what I'm playing for now with sex, with love making. I'm playing for that connection. And it starts from within me. And then from there, I can connect deeply and fully and intimately with my partner. And then when that happens, the goal of orgasm is gone. I am not attached to orgasm. Some of my most incredible, transformative, healing, magical sexual experiences, I did not come. And I was so perfectly fine with that. And that happens more and more frequently where when I get into that space of being able to connect and feeling that connection and operating from that space of being connected, then an orgasm is a wonderful icing on the cake. It's like, if it happens, amazing. If I want to create that, amazing. I'm I'm all about feeling that energy. If it doesn't, perfectly fine. Because that connection is so rich and that connection is so fulfilling. You know, and we talked earlier, I was talking about the trust challenge and filling up your tank, making those deposits. Well, that connection for me, being in that beast mode, that is an instant deposit. That's an instant tank fill up for me. And at that point, I don't need the orgasm to make me feel as if sex was successful. All that shit goes away for me. And when I'm in that, that space, when I'm, when I'm playing for that connectedness, then sex really opens up 
what it can be, the possibilities for sex. Sex, sex is about, you know, working on myself. It's about, it's about figuring out my sexual identity. You know, it's about expression. It's about me being bold and courageous with how I express, with the moans and, and the different sounds that come out, with the, with the words, with the things that I say to my partner. It's about really just being that person that's fully expressed. Sex becomes about mindfulness. It becomes about this, this, this present moment right now. Everything else melts away, fades away. When I'm playing for connection, what I can create within sex is limitless. When I'm playing for orgasm, it's a very different story. And I did that for a long time. <laughs> I have a lot of experience playing that story. Not because I have a lot of sexual partners, but because I have a lot of years of repping that same goal. All right, orgasm. All right, let's, let's get in there. Let's make an orgasm. So then, I, man, I would do so many things. I would, I would masturbate before sex. All right, if I get one out of, the, out of my system, then it's going to take me longer to get hard and to build up for the next one. And you know what's funny? That stuff is in movies. I think it was in, um, oh, that Adam, uh, not Adam Sandler, uh, that Ben Stiller movie. He's about to go on a date with Cameron Diaz, and his boys are like, yo, you can't go, you can't go out on a date with her with, I don't know, what did they say, like, like uh, uh, one in the chamber or something like that with a loaded gun? And then, you know, he goes and, and jerks off in the bathroom. Like, that's part, there's a reason why that was funny. It's because it's true. Because we do that so that we can last longer. We try all these little, these little tricks. And why do we do that? Because the goal of sex, the mark of successful sex, is orgasm. Let's evolve that. Let's evolve that. We know we're playing for abundant, loving lives. Abundance in the bedroom is not counting orgasms. It's not. Because for most guys, when, when you have your orgasm, okay, now you're spent. <laughs> like... You're done. I think it was Miles Davis who says, you know, I would fight Muhammad Ali after he comes because he's going to have no energy because he's spent. That's just what happens with dudes. You know, we, we release that energy and that essence, that life force, and a lot of times we're spent. So how are you going to experience that abundance in the bedroom if your goal is orgasm and when you're complete with orgasm, you're spent? Play for something different. You play for connectedness? Awesome. You can always go deeper in your connection. You can always go deeper in your intimacy. And there's, there's, uh, there's levels beyond connection and intimacy. I've talked about them a little bit before. I've talked about uh, that abundant love paradigm where sex is no longer about um, pleasure. It's no longer about duty. It's no longer about procreation. Sex becomes about healing and empowerment, and sustainable joy. The things that, that sexual energy can and does activate are, are mind-blowing when you begin to not, not just study them, but when you begin to put, put things into practice and be intentional around sexual intimacy. But for right now, let's just focus on moving from a place of the barometer of sex is orgasm to something more powerful, in my opinion, that's connectedness, that's intimacy. And going inward, connecting with yourself first and foremost. You know, when, when we use orgasm as a way to measure whether or not sex is successful, quote unquote, or not, a lot of times what happens is we get caught up in these roles of the giver and the receiver. And so what can commonly happen is you, you want to make sure it's tit for tat. You want to make sure that whatever they do to me, I need to do back to them. If he gives me an orgasm, I have to give him an orgasm. Because orgasm is what you have as your pinnacle. That's what you put on the pedestal. So if he goes down on me, I have to go down on him. And then, huh, what if you don't enjoy going down on him? Okay, well, don't go down on me. And it's just tit for tat. Sex is about evening the score. A lot of people have felt that way. I've totally felt that way. If she goes down on me, now I'm like, all right, well, 
I got to go down on her now. Go back to some of those those goals of sex I mentioned earlier. You know, I'm talking about uh, pleasure and orgasm. But another goal, another intention, another paradigm around sex is duty and obligation. That's what I'm talking about now. You go down on me and now I feel obligated to go down on you. And then what's interesting is there's other beliefs that can spin from that. Well, if you go down on me and I don't go down on you, well, shit, now I feel like I just solicited you. Now I, I feel like I'm somebody who just kind of, you know, threw you a $100 bill on the street corner and said, come over here and service me. And flip that around. If I go down on you and you don't, you don't please me, you don't, you know, reciprocate, well, then now I feel like a prostitute. Because I've just gone down and serviced you and you got yours and then I went about my business. That's what happens. That's the shit that happens when we put orgasm as the goal of sex. But when we talk about connectedness, when we talk about intimacy, oh my gosh, I can go down on Sarah for hours and have no expectation of her touching me because I can create connection with myself and I can create connection with her. I'm playing for connection. It doesn't matter what happens. I can create connection through intimate massage. It doesn't matter what happens. So see how the paradigm through which you view the goal of sex not only influences how you feel about sex, it's going to influence how you feel about intimacy. It's going to influence how you feel about giving and receiving. It'll influence how you feel about love. We're in love because we have sex. Oh shit, we're not having sex, we must not be in love. We're in love if we're having good sex. Good sex is the marker of a powerful, loving relationship. Oh my gosh, I had an orgasm, but they didn't. What does that mean? See, that shit has like really deep tendrils. It, 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 it can weave its way around so many things. So I want to share with you, I want to like wrap this up by sharing things that I have done to move myself from this place of sex being about orgasm and sex being about duty to sex being more about connection and intimacy. Because there's been some very specific things that I have done and that I continue to do that have helped me to to get to a different place and create different sexual experiences, but also create different experiences in how I relate to myself. One of them I've mentioned on the show before, and that's orgasmic meditation or OM, O-M. So I have been practicing OM, I've been practicing orgasmic meditation for over two years, maybe even three, I don't know, two and a half years, we'll just say. And OM is a, is a powerful practice. It, it, there, there's, there's an activity, there's action involved, and it is sexually intimate, but it isn't sex. And OM is, is, is a way to be in that sexually intimate space that com- where it completely removes the pressure from orgasm. Because in OM, there is, no, there is no objective other than that connection. So I'll let you go and research OM. I actually did an episode with one of the co-founders of the brand that really pushed OM out into the mainstream um, his name was, uh, was, was Robert Kandel, and I did an interview with him, which published back on July 25th of 2018. It's called Sexual Consciousness and Vulnerable Masculinity with Robert Kandel. So go check that out, because we talk about OM. We talk a lot about orgasmic meditation. And, you know, it's a practice that I recommend to the clients I work with. It's a practice that I share with friends who are, you know, when we get into conversations about uh, their sex lives with their partners. And, you know, OM is, is, it is, it is connection. That's what it's about. It's about connection. And it, you know, the practice itself, like I said, there is no orgasm. We're not playing for orgasm at all. It's even timed. There's even a timer with orgasm meditation. You sit there for 15 minutes. So that's one thing that I've been doing. And I OM at least once a week. I own about once a week. So, no, I won't even say at least. I would say uh, right now is probably at most once a week. So, uh, one ohm a week. I've been doing that for a number of years. 
Another thing that I've done is I've gone back and I've taken like a mental audit of my my sexual history, so to speak. Like I've thought back to what, how did I view sex when I first started having sex? And where did those views come from? And what kept those views alive? And, you know, with those views, what were the goals then that I had for sex? And how did those goals make me feel about sex, make me feel about myself, make me, make me feel about my partner, make me feel about intimacy and love and relationships, and, you know, I, I know that for myself, porn played such a huge role in all of that and how I viewed myself and the purpose for sex and how people are supposed to show up in sex. It was just a huge, huge influence uh, in my life. And in porn, almost every single porno ends with an orgasm, does it not? Mostly the dude. You don't, you don't, you don't know every single time the woman has an orgasm in a porno. But you know, every single time the dude does, because it's shot somewhere, <laughs> they show it to you. So that was ingrained in my mind. So what I've done is I've gone back and been like, wow, okay. One of the reasons why I feel like the goal of sex is orgasm is because that's what I watched for so many years. That's what I repped for so many years. Holy shit. Okay, that's where that pair, like I'm tracing it back. I recommend, think about doing that for yourself. The third thing that I did and or I do now is I set intentions for my sexual experiences. I set intentions. My intentions today are about connection. They're about manifestation. They're about healing. But I'm very intentional when I step into the bedroom with someone. And yes, there's, there's spontaneous sex. Sarah and I had amazing spontaneous sex today. I didn't necessarily sit down and be like, what, do I, what am I playing for right now? But the majority of the time I do, I say, okay, what do I want to create? How do I want to show up in this experience? What do I want to experience? From, from physical things I might want to experience to the connection types of things I want to experience. You know, I want to be able to activate beast mode with like the snap of my fingers when I'm walking around the grocery store. Just to be in that state of, of that energy flowing through me. I'm not talking about walking around with a heart on or anything. I'm just talking about like be in that state of just being like, shit, you know, I'm that, I'm that sexual God. Like have that feeling flowing through me. So when, I, when I'm, you know, about to make love and beforehand when I'm talking to who I'm with, it's like let's put some things like out, out there for intentions. Let's set those intentions. That right there ensures that I'm not going into this with orgasm as my goal. Because my, in my intentions, there's nothing about orgasm. I do not say, I want to have one orgasm, I want you to have four. Hell no. Absolutely not. So setting intentions and having those intentions be around connection, around manifestation, around healing, around intimacy, around whatever, absolutely is repping moving from that goal-oriented sex paradigm to this connected sex paradigm. So that's what I've done, and I will leave you with a couple of action items. I want you to just think about what your current goals are for sex. Where are you coming from? What paradigm are you coming from? Are you coming from the pleasure paradigm, where it's all about orgasm? Are you coming from the duty paradigm, where it's about obligation? It's about this is how we show each other love? Just Think about and understand the current paradigm that you're coming from. Because that paradigm is influencing what goes down in the bedroom or maybe what doesn't go down in the bedroom. It's influencing how you feel about sex in general. It's influencing how you feel about yourself and your sexual self. And it's influencing how you express. So let's just become aware of it. That's, that's one simple action item. Another action item I totally recommend go and listen to that episode where I talked to Rob Kendall about oming, about orgasmic meditation. Go check it out because it'll give you just a different paradigm. It'll just give you another way to view sex and intimacy and, and sexual intimacy. You can also go on Google and, and Google search um, orgasmic meditation. There's an amazing TED Talk that Rob's business partner, Nicole Daydone, um, gave all about orgasm 
And then you can also go to their website, one taste dot, I think it's com. Let me just double check. I'm on my computer right now. No, it's actually one taste dot us. O N E T A S T E dot us. You know, it's amazing. I'm looking at their homepage right now. And the tagline says, Wellness just got interesting. And it says, Experience, connection, intimacy. Boom. Go check them out. It's just going to be more along the lines of what I've been talking about, giving you a different context, different paradigm to view sex and intimacy. It's amazing. And your third action item, this is for those who want to be bold, who want to put in some physical reps, engage in sex or some sort of sex act where orgasm is completely off the table. Just remove it from the table. So whether that is actual intercourse, great. Maybe it's a, it's a lingam massage. Maybe it's a yoni massage. Awesome. Maybe it's just a, you know, a, a sensual massage with your partner, whatever it is. Maybe it's going down on one another, but stopping before orgasm. Whatever you do, just engage in some sort of, sort of you know, sexually intimate act where you take orgasm off of the table and see what comes up for you. That'll help you generate that awareness around your current paradigm. When you remove orgasm from the table and you say, we're not going to have orgasms tonight, then you're going to be thinking, well, what are, we, what are we here for? Oh, shit. So maybe my paradigm around sex, maybe the goal of sex for me has been orgasm. Wow, interesting. So get into those experiences and practice mindfulness. You know, let's be aware of the thoughts and the feelings that come up. What do you notice about your partner's body or your partner's breathing? Or maybe temperature. You know, we heat up when we're in these moments. Use that at once you've removed orgasm from the table. Use this act to really tune in and tap in. I, I, I know that there's going to be some amazing things that happen when you examine what it looks like to create intimacy without the pressure of orgasm. Gosh, if one of my partners had just said in one, in one session, like, hey, Matthew, I want to make love, but let's just totally remove orgasm from the table. I don't even know what my brain would have done. I'd be like, what? what? Are you, I, we can do that? That's a thing? Holy shit. You know, that would have blown my mind. So I invite you to practice that. I invite you to give it a shot. And, you know, this, is, this has been a cool episode to record because I... I, I did some prep for this, um, and it got me thinking about myself. And it got me thinking about my past. And um, my desire is that you, you think about yours as well. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. I would love, love, love to receive some feedback. Email me, mattcbivens at gmail.com. Hit me up on Instagram, Matthew underscore Bivens. Go to my website, MatthewBivens.com. Go to the contact form. Just get in touch. Share with me your feelings. Uh, I know you are having them. Fellas, I know you're thinking about this stuff. I know it because I am. Because my buddy was. And we're walking to the car and we're talking about this shit. Like, I know you're thinking about it. And women, I know you're thinking about it as well. You're right there. This stuff is coming up. So let's... uh Let's just let's just let's just go and I don't know, explore. Let's allow new beliefs to come in. Let's wear on new paradigms. Just see how they fit. Especially if this episode makes you uncomfortable. Especially if the ideas I've presented make you feel nervous or anxious or whatever, then that's definitely an area for you to dig into. Go in. Some amazing things will, will, will result from it. So, all right. Thank you all for joining me today on the podcast. My name is Matthew Bivens, and here is to you having it all. Quick note about the Having It All podcast. I am not a doctor nor a licensed therapist. I'm a guy with a story and a passion for conscious conversation. My thoughts, opinions, and beliefs are my own. 
So please consult with your doctor or healthcare provider regarding any questions or issues you have related to your personal, physical, or mental health.